Hi everyone. In this video, I will tell you about a stock trading practice called short selling or selling a stock short. So normally investors buy a stock first and sell it later, hopefully at a profit by selling it at a higher price. Well, short selling works the exact opposite way. You sell the stock first and then buy it later, hopefully to profit by buying the stock at a lower price. Now you're probably wondering, well, how can I sell something before I even own it? Don't I have to own the stock first? Yeah, actually, no. In a short sale, you can sell someone else's shares. So what happens is that brokerage firms like Robinhood or E-Trade hold a wide range of stocks and securities on behalf of their clients. So when you decide to sell a stock short, your broker essentially lends you someone else's stock to sell. And what you're hoping is that not too long after you sell it, the price will drop, you'll buy those shares back and return them to your broker. Ah, but now you're wondering, well, what if I sell those shares and the price doesn't go down, but it goes up? And what if the person whose shares I just sold wants to sell their shares before I've had the chance to buy them back? Yeah, that's the risk both you and your broker are taking. Technically, your broker can simply take another client's shares and give the proceeds to the person whose shares they lent to you. And your broker will often do that, but only up to a certain point. Because as the price of the stock increases, your broker knows that it is becoming more expensive for you to buy back the shares. And the last thing your broker wants is for you to not be able to pay them back. Which is why in order to protect themselves, brokers do a few things. First, when you sell the stock short, the money doesn't go into your account. Your broker holds it in their account on your behalf. Secondly, at the time you sell the stock short, they require you to put additional money or equity in that account. This is called your initial margin. And the Regulation T of Federal Reserve Board basically says that you have to have an initial margin of 50%. And not just that, your broker will also require a maintenance margin, typically between 25 and 40%. So that if the price of the stock starts to go up after the short sale, there is enough money in the account that the broker can themselves buy back the shares that you borrowed from them. All right, so with that background information, let me actually walk you through a simple numerical example that shows how short selling works and also how it influences the returns that you make on your investment. So suppose there's a stock which is selling for $100 per share right now and you decide to sell 1,000 shares of this particular stock. So your broker is gonna give you 1,000 shares from somebody else's account and you're gonna sell these. If I ask you how much money you're gonna get from shorting these shares, well, I hope you can see that's a simple calculation. Simply multiply 100 by the 1,000 shares. So the total amount that you will get is $100,000. Now the initial margin is 50%. This means that your broker is saying that, look, I have effectively lent you $100,000. Why? Because if you had to pay me back the 1,000 shares that I just lent you, you will need to spend $100,000. And I want you to have at least 50% of that amount in the form of equity in the account, which is $50,000. All right, so now let's further assume that you hold on to your short position for one year. And let's suppose, at least for now, that these shares do not pay any dividends. Now, after one year, the price of the stock may be lower or higher than $100. And so what I want to show you is how the amount that you owe to your broker and the worth of your equity and your margin will look like depending on what the year end price is. So as an example, let's suppose by the end of the year that the price of the stock is $30. And now you have to return the 1000 shares that you borrowed from your broker. If I ask you how much is the dollar amount, not the shares, but the dollar amount is that you owe to your broker, technically it's simply 30 times the 1000 shares that you owe to your broker. 
And as you can probably see, this dollar amount is going to be different depending on what the year end price is. And so I can copy this formula and paste it through and through to show you how much you will owe to your broker at the end of one year, depending on what the year end price is. We can use this information to actually figure out what the worth of your equity will be at the end of the year. Specifically, recall that when you did the short sale, you had $100,000 in your account from the short sale proceeds and also $50,000 of your own money. Now, if the price ends up being $30 by the end of the year, all you have to do is pay $30,000 out of this account to pay back the thousand shares you owe to your broker, which means that the difference between this $150,000 and the $30,000, guess what? This belongs to you. So the worth of your equity by the end of the year in this case will simply be equal to $120,000. And again, I can copy this formula and paste it through and through to show you what the worth of your equity will be in the account by the end of the year. Not surprisingly, as the price of stock is increasing, the worth of your equity is going down. In fact, if the price rises to $150, actually, you will have zero equity because in order to buy 1,000 shares from the market, you will need to spend $150,000, which will exhaust all the amount that you have in the account. You can use this information to calculate your margin as well. Your margin is simply equal to the worth of your equity in relation to the amount that you owe to your broker. So in this case, it's 400%. I can actually copy this formula and paste it through and through to show you what your margin would look like at these different prices. Notice that your margin declines as the price of the stock increases. The moment the price drops to something like $120, notice that your margin is now 25%. And if the broker has a maintenance margin of 30%, this is where you will get a margin call. A margin call is simply your broker calling you up and saying, hey, you don't have a lot of equity in the account, so either increase the amount of money in the account so that your total equity in relation to the amount that you owe me right now becomes at least 30 percent or i will be forced to go out in the market myself buy the thousand shares that you owe me at 120 dollars and then give you your thirty thousand dollars back what i also want to show you is how your return on investment will behave depending on the price of the stock at the end of the year remember that your own investment is simply this initial fifty thousand dollars that you put in and so if by the end of the year the price of the stock is thirty dollars if i ask you what is the return on your investment so well my equity is worth a hundred and twenty thousand dollars which means that when i put in $50,000, I got 120, that's a quote unquote profit of $70,000. And I made that on an initial investment of $50,000. So the return on investment is a nice looking number, $140,000. And I can copy this and paste this through and through. And so no surprises that as the price at which you have to buy back the stock is higher, your return is going down. For some perspective, what I actually wanna show you is the return on the actual stock, depending on these year end prices. Specifically, if by the end of the year, the price of the stock is $30, and at the beginning it was $100, if I ask you what was the return on the stock, you'll say, well, it's simply equal to this $30 minus what the price was at the beginning of the year, which was $100, I can divide that by this $100, so negative 70%. And again, I can copy this and paste this through and through. So notice two very important things. First is somewhat obvious, which is that if the stock does poorly, you do better. But more importantly, notice that negative returns on the stock translate into magnified positive returns for you. And similarly, positive returns for the stock translate into 
magnified negative returns for you. Your good returns are really, really good, but your bad returns are really, really bad. Specifically, if the price of the stock rises to $150, that will wipe out your equity and you will make a negative 100% return, even though the price of the stock itself just went up by 50%. This is not surprising, and it is in this sense that short selling is very similar to margin trading because essentially what you're doing is that you're borrowing money from the broker. And whenever you borrow, whenever you take on debt, you're essentially taking on financial leverage and leverage increases your risk. With short selling, however, you need to be very, very careful because you lose money when the price is going up. And theoretically speaking, there is no limit to how high the price can go, which means that theoretically there is no limit to how high your losses can be. They can be negative 100%, negative 200%, negative 500%, which is why it is very common for investors who do short sales to also simultaneously initiate what are called stop buy orders. Stop buy order is basically you telling your broker, hey, if the price of the stock goes beyond a certain price, let's suppose $110, I want you to go out there and buy the stock immediately. Why? Because you want to prevent a situation where it, it increases suddenly to a very high level and then you end up making very large negative returns. So if you ever decide to short sell a stock, consider initiating a stop buy order at the same time so that you can limit your losses. The last thing that I want to talk to you about here is these dividends. So recall that when you short sale, you essentially sell someone else's shares and they don't even know it. So if during that one year, if the company paid some dividends, then technically your broker will have to give them the dividends that are owed to them because, well, they own the stock. And your broker is not going to give them those dividends out of the goodness of their heart. They're expecting you to compensate them for that later. So let's suppose that this particular stock gave out a dividend of $2 per share for the year. Well, in that case, the total amount that you will owe to your broker by the end of the year will not just be 30,000 if the stock price is 30, but also you will owe $2 on a per share basis. In other words, two times a thousand or $2,000. And so the total amount that you will owe in this case will be $32,000. And naturally this will also reduce the worth of your equity, which will then have an effect on your margin and therefore the return on your investment. So nothing fundamentally changes about the calculations. The only thing that we need to account for is the dividends that we will owe to our broker by the end of the year. And so this then is a simple illustration of how short selling works, how it influences your returns, and also magnifies your risk. If you found this video useful, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And feel free to ask any questions using the comment section. Happy learning.